Um, good morning, everybody. I uh, hope you're all well. I had a quick, um, quick chat this morning. Um, wanted to comment on the John Warboys case, um, particularly because it raises so many issues that For Britain is very concerned about, particularly uh, the lack of accountability of the public sector to the public. Uh, and this this case uh, particularly raises a lot of these. And if you're not aware of the John Warby's case, he is a um, serial sex attacker. He was a uh, black cab driver in London who would use his position to essentially take probably already rather tipsy women, uh, drug them and rape them. And he was convicted uh, uh, of a, a single rape and uh, five sexual assaults and a series of drugs charges. Now, despite the fact that more than 80 individual complainants cases were sent to the Crown Prosecution Service, they only brought charges on cases involving 12 complainants. And here's our first point. The CPS told us that there wasn't enough evidence to bring charges on this uh, dozens, dozens of cases that they simply uh, ignored, or uh, simply just uh, dismissed. Uh, once again, and this happens with uh, the Grim and Gang cases, it happened with the uh, Justice for Chelsea case. Once again, we're not told why. The CPS simply tells us there's not enough evidence and they leave it at that. Now, one of four Britain's priorities is for the public sector, which is paid for by the public, to explain to us why you are not bringing charges against in so many cases against so many people. We want to know. We can get it. We can understand. Just explain to us what the evidential burden is and why you can't meet it. We deserve to know this. This guy was a predator. He was a danger to the public. And we deserve to know why you are not bringing charges. Just tell us. We'll understand it. Uh, he was convicted, as I said, of, of one rape, uh, five sexual assaults, and, and a series of uh, drugging charges. He was sentenced to an indefinite term in prison with an eight-year minimum. Eight years is what he got, uh, despite the police themselves saying they believe he's responsible perhaps for over a hundred rapes. He received an eight-year term, an eight-year minimum term. Uh, which tells us a lot, frankly. Uh, to my mind, it, it confirms that rape has transformed from being a serious crime into a misdemeanor. Well, the parole board, after the minimum eight years, the parole board decided that he should be freed. Uh, and again, no explanation. The law won't allow any explanation from the parole board as to why they deem this guy, who has been a serial, uh, but most prolific sex attacker in British history, according to one report, if, if the hundred or so rapes are true, he'll be the most prolific sex attacker in British history. And yet they are bending over backwards after eight years to release this guy and they won't tell us or can't tell us why they're releasing him. Now, the two of his victims have been allowed to, uh, uh, have been given leave to apply for a judicial review of the parole board's decision. And the latest on this is that he is now going to the European Court of Human Rights to uh, argue that he should be released. But there's a greater, greater point here. And that is that the public sector goes out of its way for perpetrators to defend and protect the rights of perpetrators. And as usual, public safety is, at, is the lowest at the bottom of the list of priorities for the public sector. Why? My question is, why does this guy have to be released at all? Why is it a given? That he has to be released and, and the only question is how best to do it. Why is it that the public sector is spending a fortune on finding ways for this guy to be released? I don't understand this and I think most of the public doesn't understand this. He is a threat to public safety. He has spent a mere eight years, he was sentenced to a mere eight years and now all the priority is getting him out of prison for some reason. Why? Why is that the priority? Once again, and we see it with uh, migration, we see it with terror suspects, we see it with returning ISIS fighters, 
as usual, the safety of the public is the bottom of the list of concerns of the public sector. They're not accountable to us, they won't tell us why they won't bring charges, they won't tell us why they're letting this guy out on parole, and they won't tell us why they're probably spending uh, six figures, if not more, of public money getting these people out of prison. Why? I want an answer to that, and there isn't an answer to it because they were not deserving of an answer according to the public sector. It's sickening and we're tired of it. And we must put in place a system, a real system of accountability so that the Crown Prosecution Service doesn't get to just tell us, oh, there's not enough evidence, forget about it. We want to know. We want to know why there's not. We want to know what the evidential burden is. We want to know. We want to know from the parole board why it is that this guy is allowed out of prison or why they have prioritized letting this guy out of prison at the expense of public safety. We've had enough. I want the public sector to change. I want it to put public safety first. That is when it comes to people like John Warboys or when it comes to ISIS terrorists or when it comes to criminal immigrants. Public safety of the British people must come first. It's as simple as that. All other priorities are lesser, are secondary to British people's public safety. And, and secondly, I want an explanation. I want the public to understand and to know why this is happening. There's a complete lack of accountability and a complete lack of transparency, and it has to end. We must make the public sector accountable to the public because it is the public who is paying for the public sector and deserve to be prioritized for a change. Um, I think... I th what time is it? 11 or so. um, I think that's it for me today. I won't be here tomorrow as I've got a few uh, meetings in London tomorrow. And then I'm back tomorrow evening in Essex where I'm giving a talk. And if you are a member of For Britain in Essex, you will have received um, an email from me letting you have details of the meeting we're having tomorrow. I'll be back at here at 11 o'clock on Friday to give you an update on how Thursday evening went. Uh, I'm very confident that we have put in place um, at least some way of holding for Britain meetings without Antifa uh, managing to spoil them. So hopefully tomorrow night we'll go off without a hitch. Um, okay, that's it. I shall be back here at Friday at 11. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll have a, a great and successful meeting tomorrow night, here's hoping. Uh, take care until then.